In this module, we are going to cover a special graphs called networks. In these diagrams, we are, go we are going to distinguish two vertices as source vertex and sink vertex. The in degree of source vertex, source vertex is 0 and the out degree of sink vertex is 0. And for each directed edge, we are going to assign an, an weight. This is called a capacity of that edge. Now, we are going to define a mapping from edge set to a non-negative real numbers called flow of the network. Now, a, a flow is said to be peaceful flow if it satisfies some conditions called capacity constraints and the conservative constraints. Our objective is to find out maximum feasible flow in this network. In chapter 7, in the module 5, we are going to discuss maximum flow in a network. The objectives of this module are introduction to network flows, ford Falkerson algorithm, applications of network flows, definition of a network. A network denoted n is a diagram of x together with a non-negative capacity function. This capacity function C is a mapping from edge set of x to non-negative real numbers. R plus union 0 means set of all positive integers and 0 is allowed. That means for each edge, directed edge, we are giving a, a weight, we are assigning a some number called weight that is called capacity of that edge. So, for every directed edge, we have a capacity. Two distinguished vertices denoted S and T, which are commonly called source vertex and sink vertex respectively. The vertices of the network are also terms commonly called nodes. <coughs> flow of a network, a flow F assigns a value F of E to each edge actually directed edge. That is, flow is a mapping from f from edge set of x to r plus union 0, that is non-negative real numbers. Let n be a network with its associated diagram of x. Also, let f is a mapping from edge set of x to r plus union 0 be a flow. Then we write f out of v is the total flow on the edges leaving v. f in of v is for the total flow on the edges entering v. In particular, f in and f out are also functions from, these are functions from vertex set to non-negative real numbers. So, f is a mapping from edge set to non-negative real numbers, but f in and f out are functions from vertex set to non-negative real numbers. So, for a given functions, we are creating a new functions from edge set to non-negative real numbers to vertex set to non-negative real numbers. We assume that f in of s is equal to f out of t is equal to 0. A flow is said to be feasible flow if it satisfies the capacity constraint, capacity constraint that is 0 is less than or equal to f of e is less than or equal to c of e for each edge e of x. And conservative constraints that is f out of v is equal to f in of v for each node excluding the source and sink node. The value of the flow is denoted val of f is a net flow that is f in of t minus f out of t which is equal to f in of t into the sink or it can also defined as net flow that is f out of s minus f in of s that is equal to f out of s out of the source. A maximum flow is a feasible flow of maximum value. A zero flow assigns flow zero to each edge and it is feasible. 
we are, we are going to illustrate all these things with an example. Look at, consider the following network. In the first graph, what we saw is, the, it is a network with four vertices, S, U, V, T. S is a source vertex and T is a sink vertex. The in degree of S is 0 and out degree of T is 0. And all edges are given some capacities. For example, the edge from S to U has a capacity 20, the edge from U to T has capacity 10, the edge from U to V has capacity 30, edge from S to V has a capacity 10 and V edge from V to T has a capacity 20 again. So, this is a network flow. Now, we are going to give a flow to it. So, zero flow first we are assigning, then its zero flow is denoted as S to U we are given flow as 0, flows are denoted in the brackets. Again from u to t everywhere we given a 0 flow. Now the following network is not a feasible flow. The third example or third diagram shows that for the vertex u, if you see that the capacity, uh, the inflow to u is 1 whereas outflow to u is 2 u to t the flow value is 1 and u to v also flow value is 1. So, f in of u is 1, f out of u is equal to 2. So, it is not a feasible flow. Similarly, in the fourth example or fourth diagram, where whereas the following network is feasible flow, but not a maximal, maximal flow. Why it is a not a maximal flow? The, the flow going out of s is 8 and go, going to towards t is also 8, but it ha, we, we can give more flow than the this diagram shows. Suppose we are given the network x and the capacity constraints on the different edges of x as you can see in the above figure, then natural goal is to arrange the traffic, so as to make most efficient use of available capacities. Suppose we start with a 0 flow that is f of e equal to 0 for all e of the edges. Clearly, this flow respects the capacity and the conserva conservation conditions that is it is a feasible flow. But note that we not achieved anything as we have not utilized the network at all. So, we are try to increase the value of the 0 flow f by pushing the flow along the path from S to T up to the limits imposed by the edge capacities. So, we can choose the path consisting of edges S u, V u and V t and increase the flow on the edges to 20 and leave f of e equal to 0 for other two edges. We will state this in the following network diagram. So, if you look at this example, here the flow value from S to U is 20, the maximum capacity is also 20 and the inflow to U is 20, outflow to U is also 20 means 0 flow is going from U to T and 20 flow is going from U to V. And total flow now to re reaching T is again 20. So, but note that the flow value is which is equal to 20 at this stage is not the maximum. The maximum flow value can be achieved by the following network. So, in this network we changed the flow value. So, we defined a new flow value, new function. So, if you look at from S to U the flow value is 20, from S to V is also flow value 20. So, now the flow value reaching to T that is again 30. So, that is the maximum we can do for this network. So, that is this last flow is the not only feasible flow, it is a maximum feasible flow. Now, we are going to define an F augmenting path. When F is a feasible flow in a network N, an F, F augmenting path is a source to sink path P in the underlying graph x. Underlying graph x means in the network we have directions. 
if you remove the directions then the graph is called underlying graph so n is a network and underlying graph is x the x does not have the directions such that for each edge e belongs to e of p if p follows e in the forward direction then f of e is less than c of e so when pins we are putting condition then only it is called an f augmenting path if p follows e in the backward direction then f of e should be greater than 0 so if you have an augmenting path like this then we will define or we will take epsilon of e equal to c of e minus f of e when e is forward on p epsilon of e is equal to f of e when e is backward on p then the tolerance of p is the tolerance of the of p that is path p is defined to be equal to minimum of e belongs to e e of p that is on the edges of path p epsilon of e this is called the tolerance of the path p so now this uh, lemma going to give us important result if p is an augmenting path with a tolerance z then changing flow by plus z on the edges that are forwarded on p and by minus z on the edges that are backwarded on p produces a feasible flow f dash with a value of f dash is equal to f plus z. So, this following example illustrates the same. So, here we have a flow then the flow value is just 1. Now, we can by defining f augmenting path if you look at here we changed the flow value from v to x from 1 to 0 and some places like for example s to x we changed the flow value 1 so one it is better an exercise to check what is the f augmenting path and what are the changes we done now if you look at the second graph now the for the f dash flow is f dash now the flow value is equal to 2 so the total value f out of s is 2 as well as f in of t is also 2 so that is a maximum which we can achieve so by using augmenting path we can say we can define a new flow that is f dash and we achieve we can get the maximum flow now we are going to define an st cut in a network a source sink cut or simply st cut denoted by st consists of edges from the source set s to sink set t where s and t are partitions of the all the nodes that is s union t is all the vertices and s intersection t is empty and the main condition is this the source vertex small s belongs to capital s and the sink vertex t belongs to capital t the capacity of the cut written c of s t is the total capacities on the edges s t that is c of s t is defined as summation e out of s c of e so this lemma says that if f is any s t feasible flow and a b is any s t cut then value of the flow f val of f is equal to f out of a minus f in of a that is equal to f in of b minus f out of a out of b so by definition value of the flow is equal to f out of s which is equal to f in of t just we are defining just we wrote the definition for the value of the flow and but we all know we also know that f in of s equal to 0 and f out of t is also 0 hence f out of a minus f in of a is equal to all v belongs to a f out of v minus f in of v it is equal to f out of s for other vertices we know that because of the conservative condition f out of v is equal to f in of v so only vertex which is going to left in a is the source vertex so that is also equal to value of the flow which is equal to f in of t which is equal to uh, for all vertices v in b 
f in of v minus f out of v. So, that is f in of b minus f out of b, thus we obtain the required result. From the above lemma, we note that value of the flow is equal to f out of a minus f in of a, which is less than or equal to f out of a, which is equal to e out of a, that means going the edge in the direction going from a to b. f of e is less than or equal to e out of a c of e, that is equal to capacity of uh, total capacity from a to b, c of a b. Hence, the value of every flow is upper bounded by capacity of every cut. This is one of the important observation. So, in the network flows, if f, f is a feasible flow, then the f value of every flow is upper bounded by capacity of every cut. Of course, here we are not mentioned, but flow means feasible flow. In other words, if you exhibit any ST cut in N that has same value, say C star, then we immediately know that there cannot be any ST flow in N of value greater than C star. Conversely, if you exhibit any ST flow in N that has the same value say V star, then immediately we know that, that there cannot be any ST cut in N of value less than V star. If all the edges out of S could be completely saturated with a flow, then the value of the flow would be E out of S C of E. Similarly, all the edges to T completely saturated with a flow, then the value of the flow would be E to T C of E. Hence, any ST flow F, we, we can observe that E to T C of E is less than or equal to value of the flow is less than or equal to E out of S C of E that is capacity of the edge E. Now, we are going to give an important theorem in for this module or in general for network flows, the ford ferkelson algorithm. In every network, the maximum value of the feasible flow is equal to minimum capacity of a source or sink cut. So, we are giving an algorithm of this procedure. The ford ferkelson algorithm, the input is a feasible flow F in a network. Output is an F augmenting path or a cut with a capacity value of F. The idea is like this, find the nodes reachable from S by paths with the positive tolerance reaching T completes an F augmenting path. During the search, SE set of nodes labeled reached and SE set of, SE is a subset of R labeled searched. So, initially we will do like this initialization, R is equal to the source vertex and S is an empty set. And iteration, we will choose a vertex V in R minus S that is which belongs to R, but not in S. Then we will proceed like this. For each edge V w with a flow value f of V w is less than C of V w and w does not belongs to R, then we will add w to R. For each edge u v with flow value f of u v is greater than 0 and u does not belongs to R, then we will add u to r. Label each vertex added to r as reached and record v as a vertex reaching it. After exploring all edges at v, add v to s. If the sink t has been reached, put in r, then trace the path reaching to t and report it an f augmenting path and terminate. If R is equal to S in, the, in any process in the middle, if R is equal to S, then return the cut SS dash and terminate. Otherwise, iterate the process. We discussed Ford-Ferkelson algorithm, which produces a maximum 
feasible flow of a network. Now we are going to illustrate Ford Ferkelson algorithm with an example. If you look at this network, in this network the flow value is just 1, but there is a possibility that you can increase the flow value. So, it is not a maximum flow of the network. So, now we will apply Ford Ferkelson algorithm to find out an F augmenting path and finally, we will find the maximum flow. So, here, so first we initially will take R is equal to S and S is empty set. There is a excess capacity at U and X. Label them as reached and S is S as searched. That is R is equal to now S U comma X and S is equal to only the source vertex S. There is no excess capacity on the edge U V or the edge X Y. It is because on the edge U V the capacity is 1, the flow value is also 1, the on the edge X Y also the capacity is 1 and flow value is 1. So, there is no excess capacity on the edge u v or x y. So, searching from u reaches nothing, also searching from x does not reach y. However, there is a non-zero flow on the edge v comma x, thus we label v as reached and hence r is equal to s u x and v and s equal to cap small s u and x, they are already searched those all the possible edges from u and x. Only now v is in the r minus s and we search from v and reaches t. So, r is equal to s u x v t. So, we found an augmenting path s x v t, the tolerance of this path is 1 it is an exercise to check that the tolerance of this path is 1. Now, we turn labeling the algorithm again for the new flow f dash. We have excess capacity on S x and S u, but from u and x we can label no others. So, we terminate with r is equal to s is equal to s comma u comma x. So, here we have r is equal to s occurred. The capacity of the result resulting cut s s dash is 2, which is the equal to the flow value f dash and which proves that f dash is a maximum flow. Now, a theorem, suppose all capacities in the flow network n are integers, then the Ford Ferguson algorithm terminates in at most c iterations, where c is equal to the edges C out of S, C of E. The proof is very simple. Due to capacity con constraints on the edges leaving S, no flow in X can have the value greater than C. The value of the flow is maintained by Ford Ferguson algorithm increases in each iteration. So, it increases at least one in each iteration. So, at most of C steps we will get a maximum flow value. So, that is why this proof is simple. Now, integrality theorem. Integrality theorem says that if all the capacities in a network are integers, then there is a maximum flow assigning integral flow to each edge. Furthermore, some maximum flow can be partitioned into flows of unit value along the paths from source to sink. So, this is also important, the some flow value, some maximum flow value can be partitioned into flows of unit value along the paths from source to sink. Now, we will see few applications of maximum flow and mini cut theorem. So, one of them is a bipartite matching, other one is data mining, project selection, ail line scheduling base ball illumination, image segmentation, network connectivity, open pit mining, network reliability, distributed computing and many other. So, there are many applications for the network flows. 
So, it is difficult to give the all these applications. So, we will give one or two applications. The first one is bipartite matching. So, we will see that bipartite graph matching problem is defined like this. Instance is a bipartite graph x. The solution what we need to find out is a matching of largest size in x. So, we are going to convert the given bipartite graph into a network like this. Means, we are going to add two vertices S and T and edges from S2 all the vertices X1, X2 and so on X5 and edges from Y1, Y2 and so on Y5 to T. So, in this way we are converting and also we will put directed edges from X5 to Y5 earlier these are just edges now we converted all of them into directed edges. So, clearly the in degree and out degree of each vertex in for x 1, x 2, x 5 are going to be same. Beginning with the bipartite graph x v of x equal to a union b in an instance of the bipartite matching problem we constructed a flow network x dash. First we direct all edges in x from a to b. Then we add a node S and a node T and adjust Sx for all x belongs to A and Yt for all belongs to y, uh, B. One can see refer the previous slide to understand again this. Finally, we give each edge in x dash a capacity 1. So, we can compute maximum ST flow in this network x dash. We will discover that the value of the maximum flow is equal to the size of maximum matching in x. Moreover, one can use flow itself to recover the matching. The ford ferkelson algorithm can be used to find maximum matching in a bipartite graph in order of m n time, where n comma m are the number of vertices and edges respectively. So, this is a very nice application to maximum matching can be found in a polynomial time or very simple time. So, now we will illustrate matching implies flow. If there is a matching with uh, k edges in x, there is an ST flow of value k in x dash. So, that we will show. Suppose, there is a matching in x with consisting of k edges with appropriate lab relabeling, we will assume that those edges are x 1 by 1, x 2 y 2 and so on x k y k. Then Consider the flow f that sends one unit along each of the path from s x i y i t that is f of e equal to 1 for each edge on these paths. If f is s t flow with value k. Now, flow implies matching. If there is an integer valued flow f in x dash with a value k there is a matching m in x with k edges. There is an integer valued flow f of value k, flow along any edge is either 0 or 1. Let m be set of all edges not incident on x or t with a flow value equal to 1. We claim that m contains k edges. Consider the cut st with s equal to capital S equal to small s union a each node in A respectively B is a tail respectively head of at most one edge in M. Proof follows from conservative flow. So, conclusion the size of maximum matching in X is equal to the value of the maximum flow in X dash. The edges in this matching are those that carry flow from A to B in X dash. Now, we will see another application of network flows that is a disjoint path problem. Design path problem says that given a diagraph x equal to v comma e and two nodes s and t, find the maximum number of edge disjoint hc paths. Two paths are edge disjoint if they have no edge in common. So, first this is a definition of edge disjoint paths. Maximum for formulation for this is s n unit capacity to every edge. So, the theorem says that 
maximum number of edge disjoint st paths equal to maximum flow value suppose there are k edge disjoint paths p1 p2 and so on pk set f of e equal to 1 if e participates in some path pi else f of e equal to 0 since paths are edge disjoint f is a flow value of the so f is a flow of value k since there are k paths are there and because of the feasible flow we are going to get f the flow value of f is k for the converse part assign unit capacity to every edge suppose maximum flow value is k then from integrality theorem which we stated earlier there exist 0 1 flow f of value k consider the edge su with f of su equal to 1 by conservation there exist an edge uv with f of uv equal to 1 so continue till reach t always choose a new edge produces k of course not necessarily simple edge disjoint paths so one can eliminate the cycles to get a simple pass if desired we observed various applications of network flows but we discussed only two applications one is bipartite matching problem other one is disjoint path problem with this we end this module as well as this chapter 7